Okay, so the question is, uh, how do I get to unconditional love and no judgments against any human being? Well, uh, the most important thing is to set the intention. Uh, when you set an intention, know that your ego has hierarchies. Like for someone, the most important thing in the day is to make sure they buy a jam donut. So if, if your highest purpose in life is to make sure you get your jam donut every day, and the intention to be unconditionally loving is number six on your hierarchy list, then you're probably not going to reach, you know, it, it was going to take you probably a very long time, probably won't make it to get to reach uh, unconditional love. So to get to these absolute states of pure unconditional love without judgment uh, requ requires something called one-pointedness of mind, a ferocity of intention where it's your single purpose in life is that with no exception. So then uh, it's like your whole life purpose is to um, is the commitment not to hold judgment or resentment and to love. So how does that work? Okay, let's say, let's choose unconditional love. So you say, I'm going to unconditionally love, which means to hold no judgment against people, whether, they, whether my ego wants to call them good, bad, or ugly. And um, so that's now... Yeah, uh, you have the intention that's your life purpose there is nothing else in your life uh maybe you can have sec second and third things in your life that are kind of like you have to get done but that's your life purpose that's the way you make a very fast head ground it's like okay my intention in life is just to let go of judgment in every moment in every second my only purpose in life is to let go of judgments and to love unconditionally, without exception. And that's it. That's you, that's your life purpose. It can't be like that's a hobby that you just do on the weekends. That's your what that's your sole mission for this lifetime. So it's like that ferocious, you know, because then the universe will really test you. Your ego will really test you to see if you're committed to that. Well, what about football? Uh, but what about uh, doing the gardening uh, and, and getting, uh, you know, so it'll be all kinds of things so that you forget your prime intention in life and start wondering about other things and then start getting judgments and resentments and grievances. So you have to have that ferocity of of that's your number. That's your only purpose, really, in life, if you really want to get there quicker. And then if you have that attitude, expect to be um, beaten black and blue by your ego and the world you know expect the most obnoxious people that you wouldn't want to judge suddenly showing up in your life expect your ego to suddenly have obsessions and distractions about everything to make you start thinking about other stuff apart from uh the commitment to love only you know because in every you don't never know in every moment there might be a different person in situation that calls for forgiveness to not hold resentment and then because the commitment is so ferocious, in my experience, when you have ferocious commitment to enlightenment or to unconditional love, um, it's like the, you, know, you get accelerated testing from your ego and from the world. So it is to expect that. And now because your commitment is in every second to love without judgment. So what then happens is you'll be given tests. So what do you do when the tests come, when that unlovable person obnoxious person comes into your life and you've committed unconditional love well in that split second you're either praying uh you you have non-verbal intention is very powerful it's like something wants to get into a judgment thought and yet your whole life intention and commitment of your soul is not even to allow your thoughts to go there you know it's like uh i can see something wants to hold a judgment against him but i'm not i'm gonna let it go I'm not even let the th thought emerge in mind um, so there's this ferocity or you're doing the observer or the prayers and you're not only just doing them like an intellectual thing but you're doing them like that's your purpose in life is not and what happens when you have that level of ferocity is you start to evolve you know it almost starts to take on a life as its own it's like that's you know what what's your life purpose and you go well my life life purpose is not to judge and to unconditionally love not to even hold a thought not to have thoughts even um, and just to allow things to be what they are and just to be in a state of love all the time to be in the in the beloved in the holy the holiness of the infinite uh, beyond thoughts beyond judgments and beyond uh, being an ego in the world 
So with that kind of ferocity, spiritual aid, spiritual teachers, spiritual groups will come to your aid because the, the universe sees your inner commitment is at a great level. Uh, and so all kinds of things will also conspire to help you. And uh, teachers, people will come, uh, groups will come, circumstances, both good, and, you know, the aid will come to help you in your commitment because it's a great blessing to the world to be unconditional love or enlightened. You put up so much light and love uh, that you're a great blessing. But also forces from your own ego and from other people's egos will amass uh, they'll be jealous. They want to pull you down. Your own ego will want to pull you down. Your your ego's life is threatened through a commitment to unconditional love and to not judge because your ego lives on judgments and resentments and control. So expect your ego and expect the other egos in the world to collude together to derail you. So you're not going to you're not going to win that easily. But uh, great commitment is required. Why is it that so few? Uh, saints in the world, enlightened teachers in the world. It's not that it's not like there are hundreds in the, your local street. Uh, so that's because it requires that you know you can see it in the lives of the saints, the the, the ferocious commitment to undo the ego while it still exists until they reach those sublime states. So you're not going to make it if you're half-hearted, or if it's if it's one of those like hobby things. It has to be. A, a, it has to be your your you you're inspired at the level of your soul, your soul mission, your soul contract, um, and you're not going to let material things or external things uh, uh, direct you, because in every moment your commitment is just to do that. So um, that is um, that's how you reach unconditional love or enlightenment. 